Okay, so um, once a survey is submitted, we go to Submitted Surveys, and I'm going to click the Lodge. Okay, so in step one, we've got the project name, and we've got the, the um, <coughs> project name, and we've got the name of the client. Um, got postcode. Um, we can choose the weather data as well for the region. Uh, we can click on this map. The map will show us whereabouts we are, and um, which which region to use for the degree day data for the energy calculation, um, an approximate city as well. Um, is Manchester this area and and um, also the 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 height above sea level as well and you can check that by using the postcode and using the map coordinates just click on this here um, and it takes you to a website where you can type in your location um, the postcode and it will give you your um, um, height and of course you can select the height here from sea level let's use 100 meters in this case go to next and um, it's given us a nice review of how many rooms we've got in the survey and the total um, square meter area as well um, and we can we can initially select um, our heat source type and at this stage we don't know which um, manufacturer we're going to use or, or even model because we haven't done the heat loss calculation just yet so we're going to go to next So the first thing we want to do is look at the um, reference here. We've got information required, which is the yellow ones, and the please define. So um, what we're going to do is click on the yellow ones first. So um, always start to the top left-hand corner. So cinema, uh, as you can say, cinema is, is pretty much like a living room. And the lower hall is a hall or landing. So it's picking up the design temperature and the air changes per hour, which we need to use, and it's populating it, the air changes and the design temperature in there. We go to dining room and living room. So it's a yeah, living room and a link corridor. Let's say that's a hall. Okay, and we've done all that. We go to next. Let's review all the results there. So we've got all the dimensions. Go to next master bedroom. So these are the that was the room with the, um, the vaulted ceiling. And what we've got here is also the building materials populated from the survey with a U value already pre-calculated. And it looks like we missed out a um, internal wall specifying it, so that's not a problem whatsoever because we we can look up here and it says yeah orange information required so we just click on the orange cell and we search for um, plasterboard and studding and go to OK and then we can go to next and then we've got another orange which orange orange information required for the kitchen so roof glazing um, 0.6 go to OK and then we go to uh, new door. Get it okay on that. Let's add it to the list because it was a new one. It wasn't in the de it wasn't in our default list for materials, so it, hence it was um, highlighted yellow. So we just went to OK and it's added to the um, material list. So go to next. And we've got some more yellow ones here. So again, they don't appear uh, in the default um, building description material list so when you're on site or you're measuring from the drawing these ones um, are cut, have been a custom U value that we've specified the surveyor specified so um, we click on the top one and we go to yep we're all happy with that go to OK and it populates all the 0.16 values now we're going to go to populate the 0 0.11 0 0.11 good and then we're happy with that go to OK so that's all good so now we click on next to review the heat loss and we've got our um, watts per meter squared for each room and the total watts in the worst performing room is always highlighted in in red and we've down here we've got a summary of all our u values as well um, for the floors um, external walls windows party walls uh, internal floors 
sorry, internal walls, uh, roof, ceiling, and the temperatures below the room and the temperatures above the room. Um, I haven't put in any exposed location for or intermittent heating for for this particular project, but you can do it in step uh, in step three. You can add in um, exposed location. Um, in order to proceed, we need to select the heat source type and model. So um, we can select any of these uh, manufacturers. If the manufacturer you would like to use isn't in the list, then please tell me. Um, and furthermore, as well, if the um, if you can't see the actual uh, model in there as well, then 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 uh, email um, email us and we will um, add it in as soon as possible. At the moment, I just select a um, an eight kilowatt, um, a twelve kilowatt, because uh, if I can just go back to here. So we've got the output is uh, required. Of the heat pump is 11.79, and um, for a flow temperature 45, this this particular model um, should still perform. In fact, actually, I think it's 11.9 to be really sure on this. Be accurate on that. So, um, so this that's the output for the flow temperature at 45 degrees flow temperature, and this is the output for the hot water. So let, we're assuming that we're having a flow temperature of 55 degrees for the hot water, which we're just doing in a second. So we go to OK. Let's go to Optional Pages. And um, so we can include various things in the report, and as we're going to click through, um, we you know we won't need the bivalent design, we won't need fuel comparison, we won't need ground loop because we're going to have an air source heat pump. So go to domestic hot water now, and for the number of bedrooms you've got, um, I think it's I think it's five, and uh, go to um, number of occupants for bedroom, and hot water flow temperature is 40, 55 and so it's just done the calculation for us so we're all happy with that we're going to admit in performance and we select the flow temperature so we can say 45 degrees and we can do it for each one you have a different flow temperature for each room but in most cases we're going to have the same flow temperature we're going to copy all click on there and it's copied all and it's used the correct scop value for that particular heat pump model as well so we're not using the default values of SPF anymore, it's actually the SCOP value. And we've got the um, floor type and the floor finish type here as well. Again, that's coming from the survey. Um, and uh, it looks all good. So we go to, we want to include in the report, you know, so we've got the yes or no. So we click yes. By default, it's yes anyway. Go to current radiators. There are no radiators in this one. So we can just go to, um, we'll go to no um, once it's um, loaded. So this is just doing a few calculations. We go to no because we haven't got any radiators. And, <clears throat> and bivalent design as well. We don't need that. Let's go to no. It's your comparison. So on the fuel comparison, you can compare different types of fuel. And you can the blue, the blue cells you can change as well, but in this case, you know, we're not gonna we're not going to use that, so it's going to know. Crown loop design, so it's an air source heat pump, so we don't need to do it. Going to know. Summary of results. So here's our summary of results. So the heat source selected, the worst performing room, and um, and we've got our um, energy for the year and also the running costs. So we go to save and review. And here are the MIS 2005 reference numbers on the left hand side, and all the data there as well. So you get a dashboard, and we've completed it. So we're now in a position where we can um, print out the report. So we go to completed reports, and there's the lodge there. So we can download the PDF here to the lodge, save it there, and open. We can just have a quick look. So um, I didn't complete the full address there, but obviously if you've got the full address there for the inst inst installation, it will appear, and your your company name and address there, and and of course your logo. Uh, it's a contents page. So there's a summary of results, all the details, the dimensions, the room. It's quickly clicking through, and so it's got all the all the information that you re you require for a, a detailed heat loss calculation. There's a summary as well.
to access the um, MCS compliance certificate it's a matter of just clicking here and and filling in the blanks so all the all the um, numerical values are, are populated uh, where possible and that is the uh, an example of uh, completing a heat loss report <laughs>